Hey guys, what's up? This is Don and welcome to the first lesson in a tutorial series called Animation Techniques. And we'll be exploring some important uh, fundamentals and techniques which hopefully by the end of it all you'll be able to push out some much better looking animations, uh, more dynamic, more fluid, more realistic. Today we're going to be taking a look at keyframe interpolation, more specifically temporal keyframe interpolation. So what is keyframe interpolation? Well, it is the process by which After Effects generates unknown values between two known values, i.e. your two keyframes. So we have our first keyframe at the top here and the last keyframe uh, at one second. And those are the only two known values. The rest were interpolated automatically by After Effects. So this is what we get. We get this motion path. And uh, we want to change its temporal keyframe interpolation. In the next lesson, we're going to be taking a look at spatial keyframe interpolation. But for today, it's temporal keyframe interpolation. And temporal keyframe interpolation, and I'm saying that a lot, but uh, you know, gotta hammer those technical lingos into your head. Um, it deals with time. So we are going to be trying to control um, how much time our object spends in certain regions of our um, motion path here. And by default, you can see that it spends an equal amount of time at each point. And this is represented by these dots on our motion path here. To see this motion path, you simply need to highlight your keyframes. And you can see that the dots are equally spaced out. If I get the last keyframe and hit F9 on my keyboard, this is going to turn this linear keyframe into a an easy ease keyframe and what that means is that this is no longer uniformly uh, distributed the time has now been shifted toward the end so more time is going to be spent at the end here and this is represented by more uh, crowded dots you can see that these are much closer to each other than the ones up here and you can see that the rate at which they get closer is gradual. The gap keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller each time. So the effect that we get from doing that one simple keyframe change is that our object is going to appear as if it has a more controlled descent. So it starts off fast and then slows down to a nice smooth stop. If we were to reverse that, we would simply get the opposite. If I made this a linear and made this an easy ease, it would start off slow and then accelerate and then hit the ground uh, in a much more harsh um, manner. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at how you can control this even more. If I highlight both of these keyframes, I can open up the graph editor and this gives us this uh, very nice looking graph in which we can grab the keyframes and use these handles to control this even more. So I want to shift um, more of these dots toward the end. I want my object to spend more time in the bottom half of our motion path to have an even more controlled descent or the appearance of a more controlled descent. So I'm just going to grab this handle and I'm going to, as I move this toward the left, more and more and more dots are moving toward the bottom here, which means that my object is going to spend more time in this section of the line. And the end result is a very fast moving object which decelerates and lands very softly. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. So once again, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next lesson.